Madeira Island. Madeira. 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 Madeira, Portugal. Madeira. Welcome to Madeira. Madeira is in fashion these days, and given its growing popularity over recent years, it's earned a series of unique nicknames. The Hawaii of Europe, the Diamond of Portugal, the Jewel of the Atlantic, and some people just call it Cristiano Ronaldo's Island. Ronaldo! He is a sensation! But as humble tourists who spent one month on this beautiful island, here's what we know. We have incredible view, incredible elevation, you see full shell from the sky, vertical, oh, like, a bird, like a bird from the sky, <laughs> it's incredible, it's <laughs> so good, it's so good. <laughs> it's a subtropical Portuguese island located in the Atlantic Ocean 435 miles off the African coast and 250 miles north of the Canary Islands. So I know what you're thinking because I thought it too, yo. This island is in the middle of nowhere. It's volcanic, it's green, it's lush, it's wet, it's rugged. It's Indiana Jonesy with really big cliffs. Steep roads, waterfalls everywhere, black sand beaches, incredible hikes, some interesting modes of transportation. And a landing strip that brings out the best in pilots. Expect severe turbulence. Nope. And I know the next thing you're probably thinking. Do they experience any natural disasters here in the middle of the ocean? Any not so dormant volcanoes, tsunamis, tidal waves? The simple answer is no. They've got none of that. But there is one problem. Being here for a month, we got to see a different side of this beautiful place. We wondered, will the tourism industry and infrastructure of this island be able to keep up with the demand? With a dwindling population of young people and already a shortage of jobs, but we see signs of this eventually taking its toll. We personally had challenges booking our lodging with scarce, reasonably priced options available. I'm grateful that this Airbnb is actually real because it only had one <laughs> review. This is the only time we've ever done this. Usually I never do that, but because there's limited <laughs> options, I had to. Like many places in the world right now, tourism can be a double-edged sword, offering more job opportunities while simultaneously raising the cost of living for locals. I want to share why we love this island first and then share some of our final thoughts at the end. Dopamine on crag door, dopamine, dopamine rush. We arrived by plane at the only airport on the island, Cristiano Ronaldo International Airport. Another CR7 salute. <laughs> As he was born and raised here until he was 12. This airport is just a quick 30 minute drive from its very charming capital city, Funchal. So I thought they had Uber, turns out they don't. So we're taking the public bus, takes 30 minutes, should be like three euro, three euro 50 per person instead of a 30 euro taxi. With over 100,000 inhabitants, Funchal is where most visitors base their stay out of. So we did too. Our first impression was that it's a very walkable capital city with lots of cobblestone streets, busy markets, great restaurants, little cafes, places to grab some local pancha. Your gym for the day. Yes, yes. Gym. <laughs> you get big biceps. Coastal views, and we immediately felt good about the choice to stay here for easy access to the rest of the island. One thing we noticed right out of the gates was how perfect the weather was every single day. Summer literally lasts for 12 months per year on Madeira. The weather here feels like a perfect 75, maybe just under 80 degrees. The coldest it can get at night in the wintertime is 55 Fahrenheit, and the average daily temperature in the summertime on Madeira is 77 Fahrenheit. And the water temperature remains the same throughout the year at about 68 Fahrenheit. With no long rain periods or exhausting heat, this is all thanks to the Gulf Stream. That's why the weather is super consistent and the climate is always warm. So it's basically the island of eternal spring and has even better weather than mainland Portugal. One of the best things you can do on this island is rent a car. It only takes about four hours to drive around the entire island, but there are loads of things to do and you could spend weeks trying to see it all. So we really wanna show you some of our highlights and what made our experience here so special. But next week, we're gonna be uploading a complete guide on how we organized our trip here. So if you plan on visiting Madeira, you're definitely gonna to wanna to check that one out. But here's a taste of some of our favorite things. You ready? <laughs> This hike was one of the most challenging and rewarding hikes we've ever done.
which started with a calm and beautiful sunrise, quickly turned into a hip flexor frenzy. This hike is a straight up Stairmaster workout. It starts downhill for quite a while, and then it's a series of hills. Up and down, stairs on stairs on stairs. Probably 75% of it is stairs. How are you feeling, David? I'm tired of going uphill. Man, well, that sucks because we still have the whole way back. And that's a lot of up and down. This is a lot harder than I thought. But all the pain is worth the views. You walk along moss covered cliff edges, through long, dark, cool tunnels. Ooh. Oh, dang. This one's long, dude. Okay, here. Okay. And my god, the payoff at the very top is even sweeter. A lot of people choose to just go one way, but we're so hardcore, we chose to take the hills back. And oh my god, it kicked our ass. And after such a brutal beating, all we want right now is our Brooklyn bedding. What is Brooklyn bedding, you ask? It's the best mattress in the game. And while we're here in Europe this summer, we're unfortunately far, far away from these beds. We have them both at home and in our RV, and we love them. Here's why. Brooklyn Bedding offers a wide selection of sizes and firmness levels to best suit you. And they own their own factory in the U.S., which allows them to offer super high quality mattresses without the luxury price tag. They offer a 120 night sleep trial, free shipping, and a 10 year warranty. So if you want to upgrade your mattress just like we did, head on over to brooklynbedding.com slash travel and use our code travel to get 25% off. Madeira doesn't have very many sand beaches, but natural pools are a thing here. And they're great because you don't get sandy, you don't have to worry about sharks, and you can still have a great time in the waves. And the waves are like, everybody's having a good time. It's like thrashing you about. But you gotta be really careful you don't get close to the edge. Cause you can go over. There are lifeguards here. Yeah. If there's one way to dodge the very narrow and steep streets of the island completely, it's to get up in the air. While the island has seven cable cars, Funchal has two that you can take back to back to access Monte, the very top of Funchal which is also the launch point for the most unusual and thrilling mode of transportation. To be honest, I did think this was an overpriced tourist trap before getting on the sled. But as soon as we started moving and picking up speed, they go up to 24 miles per hour, I might add. It's legit, and these guys are the real deal. For the two carreros, this becomes quite the workout. But for us passengers, a complete joyride.
Look at this. Madeira's black sand beach feels like a scene from a Jurassic Park movie. The mountains come right up to the ocean and the water temperature is perfect on a hot day. It's super nice. Like the view is incredible. There's waterfalls everywhere. Yeah. And it's not that crowded, which is also surprising. You would expect as summer approaches that it would be really busy, but it's not. We will dream of this beach for years to come. This is the introduction for the poncho, and you need to smash it to be like a bus. This is lemon, orange, and sugar, the start of the traditional drink of Madeira. After they've pulverized that to a paste, they add freshly squozen orange juice, wow. take some rum, and mix in just a small teaspoon of honey. Mixy, mixy. Okay, in with the juice. Trying the poncha, dude. Um, <laughs> acidic. Kind of reminds me, like, you know, you do like lemon honey tea and then you have the alcohol. I, so I like that though. I feel like it almost feels like medicinal, herbal. So, from a lifestyle standpoint, Madeira ticked all the boxes for us. Perfect weather. We could walk everywhere. We were a couple blocks from the ocean. We had our gym. The food prices weren't too inflated compared to like Western Europe. It felt very safe. It seemed like all the locals knew each other. And the more we chatted with locals and local business owners, the more we learned about some of their challenges. Basically since COVID, they've had the busiest years ever. The busiest years they've ever had. There's been this crazy influx of tourists. I'm not surprised obviously with all the awesome things you can do here but it's been tough for them because in particular, they're struggling to find like quality staff. Most of the young people basically after school, they leave for better opportunities on the mainland. Uh, another thing too, which can kind of be expected is once you have this influx of tourists, cost of living typically goes up. And in many cases, rent has basically doubled in some areas, especially in Funchal. I think some of them are genuinely concerned that the island won't be able to handle all of this. I think, I'm not saying that, you know, the island's gonna go into like a meltdown or anything, but for a lot of these people that are already working their butts off, I think it's a legitimate concern for them that, you know, they don't want Madeira to lose its soul either. So I guess what I'm saying is the problem isn't with Madeira itself so much. It's more with the fact that it's getting this crazy tourism surge. And ironically, I know that making these kinds of videos is kind of, could be seen as contributing to the problem because I'm just, putting more awareness of Madeira's existence out there. But at the same time, what it did for us as visitors and tourists is encourage us to ask better questions to further understand this place. And so for this new generation of tourists now hearing about Madeira, we really hope we can be extra respectful to the locals and patient with Madeira's growing pains because we love this island. It is beautiful, it is stunning, and we really wanna help keep it that way.